Okay, so we're, we're carrying on with 5.2 kinetic energy and we just I just want to introduce uh, a little bit of the inelastic side of collisions, inelastic collision. Uh, before we've looked at elastic collisions and I'm not going to repeat anything there but for example these two graphs you can see that this one looks to me to be an elastic collision because the relative speeds before are pretty much the same as after after equals before whereas this one we can see obviously is a totally inelastic collision because the relative speed after is zero so there's no relative speed so what is an example of a totally inelastic collision well if you drop uh, say some putty onto the floor there's the floor and it goes okay and so uh, the relative speed afterwards is zero okay any two objects that collide and then move at the same velocity now one quick point here and many students were asking me this in class do not think that the can so okay let's just let's just go back here we know that for an elastic collision the k before equals the k after but for an inelastic collision the kinetic energy before is not equal to the kinetic energy after for an inelastic collision we lose kinetic energy we lose k it gets converted or transferred into another form of energy which we'll get to later called internal energy okay but that's not for now but the important thing that I want you to take note of is, is something students were asking me is that when you have an inelastic collision does that mean k2 is zero does that mean that k2 is zero and the answer is it not necessarily our concept is that because v the relative velocity is zero that means the kinetic energy is zero that's not true that's not necessarily true when you drop the putty and it landed and um, it stopped moving then in this specific case yes k2 was zero because half mv squared of the because the velocity is zero and the relative velocity is zero um, we have zero kinetic energy but it's possible that you have got two objects moving toward each other or say they're moving that way they collide and they stick together but they keep moving that means your velocity is not zero and uh, and so if your velocity is not zero your final kinetic energy is not zero okay so I hope that makes sense so let's just have a look here quickly in an elastic collision and guys please get used to these kinds of um, what are they called bar graphs this is a bar graph okay so if you look at an elastic collision here's an elastic collision cart one's kinetic energy is zero cart two's kinetic energy is high they interact and cart two you can see it lowered its velocity uh, through the interaction so cart two's kinetic energy will drop because its velocity dropped and cart one's kinetic energy will increase because its velocity increased so in an elastic collision if you add up these two kinetic energies they should be the same as if you add up these two kinetic energies because it's an elastic collision whereas in a totally inelastic collision we had a, a high kinetic energy there and a zero kinetic energy there and they collided and the relative velocity after is is the same and if you um, if you add up now the two kinetic energies after collision you'll see that it's not the same as before that means we've lost some kinetic energy and it's actually gone into internal energy okay so here it says for the totally inelastic collision the changes in kinetic energies do not cancel so the system's kinetic energy after the collision is not equal to the system's kinetic energy before the collision cheers